NioCorp is in one of the hottest and most politically charged industries in the world. It also may be the nation's best hope in terms of lessening our reliance on other countries for rare earth metals. And with me is the CEO and Chairman Mark Smith uh, to talk about the company. And let's start with the Elk Creek Project. So this is in Nebraska. Right. Explain the project to me and how did you even discover the rare earth metals under a corn and soybean field there? Well, let's start with how, how it was discovered, okay. first of all. Um, there were some aerial surveys done by the, the state of Nebraska and the University of Nebraska where they checked the magnetic fields and, and, and uh, density of rocks over the whole state. And, and there was this, this large uh, anomaly as, as it's called at the time. And, and so you knew something was different down in the southeast corner of Nebraska in terms of the geology. So then uh, the state drilled a hole and lo and behold, they, they found a carbonatite deposit as it's called by the geologists. And within a carbonatite, carbonatite deposit, you will almost always find producible minerals. It's a matter of which minerals are in there. So the, the first uh, drill holes that were done had to go through pretty broad range geochemistry and it was discovered that there was niobium, there was rare earths, uh, titanium, and multiple other minerals in there. So that work kind of stopped for a while. Then another company came in and, and got land positions and started drilling more holes and they got more excited about the niobium and the rare earths and the titanium. So that work you know, went on, they, they actually drilled a lot of feet of, of core uh, out of that site. Then um, our company came in and, and took over that work okay. and we drilled more and we started to undertake all the technical work that we needed to do, feasibility study, uh, to, to find out what, what do we have there in terms of a resource? Can we actually process these minerals into sellable products? Uh, put an economic model together, put all the permitting analysis together. So we have a full feasibility study on the project now. We know what's there, we know how to process it, all the risk really has, has been you know, uh, lowered tremendously. It's a, it's a very highly de-risked project. We have all the permits in place uh, to start construction on this project. That's a, that's a huge issue for the mining industry right now. It's very difficult to get permits. Mm -hmm. State of Nebraska has been you know, a real a real hand in hand partner with us. Um, they do tough reviews and we have to meet all the regulations. We're glad to do that, but they get the work done. Yeah. It's a matter they of months. They move the process yes, along it's instead a of, of months, it's not years. It now explain these minerals that yeah. you found there and why are they so important to the economy and to national security? Yeah, and it's a, it's a really simple answer because we import 100% of the niobium that we use in this country today we import 100% of the scandium that we use in this country today. We import 100% of the magnetic rare earth oxides that we need in this country today. And we import about 92% of the titanium concentrates that we need in this country today. So to me, by definition, they become critical and strategic minerals because we're not mining them, we're not producing them in this country. We need to produce those things. Niobium is used as, a, as an alloying agent in steel and it makes the steel much stronger, much lighter, corrosion resistance, higher temperature ranges. Uh, scandium, you alloy with aluminum, kind of does the same thing that niobium does for steel. It makes it lighter, it makes it stronger, it's weldable, very corrosion resistant. Uh, titanium, uh, you know, I think the F-35 uh, jet that we have in our Air Force, uh, I think it's 80 plus percent titanium. Mm. So is that, is that important? Yeah, I think it is. And then the rare earths, of course, we use that in all kinds of defense applications, all of our com uh, commercial electronics, right. or consumer phones, electronics, right, all phone, phones, phones or... your, your, your earbuds. Uh, and then, you know, as, as part of this EV revolution mm -hmm. that we're seeing right now, I mean, electric vehicles is where we're headed and all the car companies are committed to it. You have to have uh, magnetic rare earth uh, magnets in, in the motors that drive those cars. So, you know, the EV revolution is, is going to occur only if we have enough rare earths to, to build those cars. And, and we're importing 100% of that from China right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, we, so we've got to bring it home. Now, and one of the issues is the permitting, right? Yep. Uh, I don't know if it's the EPA or who oversees this. Um, is that loosening up a little bit? Does Washington understand that we need these things for national security? Yeah, there, there's 
a whole bunch of discussions occurring in Washington, D.C. on permitting issues right now. Um, notwithstanding all those discussions that are going on, we take permitting very seriously in our company by, by our culture. You know, we want to do things right with the environment, with our neighbors. We want to do things right. We want to be safe. Um, so we undertake that. We have all of our permits in hand. We have zero permitting risk for this project right now. That's a great position to be in, but we earned it. Yeah, well, and it sounds like Nebraska does it the right way. They, do they it make the right sure way. you cross all the T's, dot all the I's, but they move the process. They along. move it along. They don't. It's, it's months. It's not years. Got it. Um, now you're headquartered in Colorado. Correct. Um, this project happens to be in Nebraska. Is the Western U.S. kind of potentially got a lot of these rare earth minerals? Under the there are several known uh, deposits of these rare earth minerals. Uh, we're very fortunate because our our resource is all on private land. Mm. Almost all of the other projects that are, are being talked about out there, for Raris in particular, are on U.S. government-owned land, and the permitting requirements you know, just go off the charts. And you've got 10, 15-year permitting efforts to, to, to get those permits in hand, and it's, it's a long process. A lot of the companies end up literally going bankrupt because they can't afford to finish that permitting process. Yeah. Well, and I'm sure it costs a lot. You've got to pay people, costs to, a lot. you know, lawyers Consultants, and things lawyers, like that. You Consultants, bet. right. Yeah. Now, um, in terms of, of the business, explain the chain. So you do the mining. Yes. And then what happens to these minerals? So we will mine uh, the mineral, the, the ore from underground. Okay. We'll bring that up to the surface and then we'll make our products right there in Nebraska on our, sur on our surface in a surface facility. That uh, will be uh, ferro-niobium, which, which is what the steel industry, the form that they wanted in to, to add to steel. We'll make scandium trioxide, which is the form the, the uh, aluminum industry wants to, to alloy it with the aluminum. We'll make uh, titanium dioxide, which is the form that the, uh, the, the titanium business wants it in. And then we'll make the high purity rare earth magnetic oxides as well. All of that will be done in Nebraska. Okay. And there, there, is, there is no rare earth oxides being produced in, in the United States today. So okay. it's something we've done. Uh, we have a history in, in, with the, our management team. We were all affiliated with a rare earth uh, project before. We know how to produce them. We have produced them. We've sold them. So we're, we're very excited you know, to finish the technical work that we need to on the rare earth side so that we can really tell the world uh, we're ready to go on rare earths. So, and, and you mentioned this is the only project Yes. Um, that is mining this in the U.S. Um, do you feel like the U.S. is starting to get this a little more, the importance of this? And where are we in terms of understanding how important these there's, metals are? There's no question in my mind that the U.S. and, and our government gets it now. Um, and I, you know, we were talking earlier, I've been preaching this message for about 20 years. Um, we cannot rely on on other countries for the minerals that we need, especially the critical and the, the strategic ones, that you know, not only for the economy, but for our defense as well. Um, so the government does get it now. And it, it took things like the Russian, uh, Russia, Ukraine conflict, where supply chains started to get uh, shut off, or we put uh, sanctions on, on other governments because of that, that conflict, and all of a sudden you can't get titanium out of Russia anymore. That's a problem. Um, we, we have apparently some, some disagreements with China from time to time. Well, when they're producing 100% basically of the rare earth elements that the whole world needs, they can shut that off very quickly and we're in trouble. That's right. We're it makes in, them very powerful in this industry. And, and, then, so. and even beyond, even if we did get along with them, you know, they're, they're going to be producing from what, from what their forecasts are, 18 million plus electric vehicles in China every year. I, I maintain that their production of rare earths will have a very difficult time supplying their own electric vehicles, much less exporting to other countries so we can make our electric right. vehicles. Right, so even if they're a friendly country, they still may not have the supply yeah. to. And, and just like we would do, I mean, if, if you have a choice between supplying your own in-country domestic industry or exporting, you'll always choose your own domestic. Right. Well, very interesting yeah. and important industry, and Huge. congratulations on uh, Mill Creek Project, and yes. best of luck in the future. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Mm -hmm.